All right, everyone, welcome to the third round of uh, Q&A with UNCA. My name is Cameron Walsh. I am the local Western North Carolina admissions counselor for UNC Asheville. I've been with our office um, about three and a half years and I've a little over five years in the admissions field overall. So um, welcome to everyone for uh, joining us for this um, Q&A with dining services that we have here at UNCA. Today I'll be joined by Megan, who is our sustainability and marketing manager for the UNCA Dining Services, and Camden, who is a student ambassador, who is a current student at UNCA, a tour guide, and interning with the Dining Services um, here at the university. So he does <laughs> quite a bit on campus for us. Um, so I will go ahead and, ha and ask Megan and Camden to go ahead and join us on the chat, and I will turn it on over to Megan who, to the best of my knowledge, has a presentation to introduce you to dining services and all the many wonderful um, avenues and ways that they assist our students. And then after the uh, presentation, we'll have a Q&A where the three of us will be more than happy to chit chat and answer any questions y'all may have. So um, Megan and Camden, welcome, and I will turn it on over to y'all. Great, hi, thanks Cameron very much. Um, thanks for the introduction. introduction. Um, like Cameron said, my name is Megan Eibach. I'm the Sustainability and Marketing Manager for Dining Services. I'm also a proud graduate of UNC Asheville. I graduated with a health and wellness degree in 2009. Seems like very long ago, um, but I love it here and I love being back on campus. It's a great environment and I'm happy to talk to you about dining services. Um, I've got a lot to cover, and so I won't go too in-depth with, with much of anything. So any questions you have that come up, please put them in the chat box, and we'll do our best to answer them. And um, I will just get started and try and tell you a little bit about dining services. Okay, so. All right. And can y'all see my, my screen here? Someone? I just see myself, so. <laughs> Uh, I can see your screen. You good? Okay, awesome. Great, so yes, UNC Asheville Dining Services. Um, I'm gonna pretend that y'all are actually here on campus, but I will go into a little bit more description about um, our dining program since right now you can't see it in the flesh. Um, so we've got six units on campus. And there we go. We've got six dining outlets on campus. Brown Hall is our main dining hall. It's an all you care to eat facility. So when you walk in the door, one swipe gets you in and you've got your choices of several different stations. And I'll just kind of go into, um, into detail with all of these. Um, so Brown Hall, all you care to eat. Um, we've got several made to order stations and on normal years we also have like a hot bar where you serve yourself that might look a little different um, this coming semester as we just take health and safety to you know as our top priority but we've got um, usually we have our deli station we've got a smoothie bar where you get to make your own smoothies we have a create your own pasta station both the deli the pasta are open for lunch and dinner we have a vegetarian station with several vegan options um, every day, every meal. We also offer for any vegetarian or vegans, um, we, and anyone really, we offer several um, nutritional supplements like nutritional yeast, and we do flaxseed, chia seed. Um, we're a very Asheville-centered dining hall, I would like to say, um, and it's delicious. We do focus on regional and ethnic foods which is really fun and great, especially if you've not really tried a lot of things. Being in the dining hall, you get to sample a lot of things before you actually commit to a full plate. So you can kind of broaden your cuisine and horizons. Um, we do lots of events, um, ranging from just special dishes to like holiday celebrations to week long celebrations. So we really try to mix it up and keep it fun. Um, and then we also have an avoiding gluten and in avoiding the top eight major allergen station where we, we take, um, all the, we do as best we can to keep those stations free from the top main allergens and just keep people safe and healthy. And that's separated um, all, along to the side of the salad bar. Let's see. And then um, Highsmith Student Union is 
the building, and then we've got um, two different operations inside there. Um, the student union on the first floor is the grotto, and next to it we have the Austin Grill, which is kind of your classic college food. So you'll get your fried chicken tenders, your burgers, your grilled cheese, your veggie burger, french fries, all that good stuff. And then we also have our build pizza, build your own pizza, and that's uh, really good. I think it's a 10 inch pizza. Add whatever toppings you want, and a lot of that um, just comes with your meal plan. And then we've got lots of grab and go options if you're in a hurry, or if you just want some more snacks, sandwiches, those kinds of things. Um, and then the down under is our another location that's in the bottom of Ponder Hall. And this is our late night place. So even though we actually open at eight in the morning with a Starbucks kiosk, we actually stay up until midnight or 2 a.m. depending on the day. So we try to help all you night owls who are just up late studying have some good food to eat. Um, the Down Under, is it does have deli sandwiches, both hot and cold, and a non pizza, but um, it also has more of a convenience store feel. So you can buy some staples for non entrees, soups, cereal, chips, um, you know, more, more bigger boxed things that you can take back to your dorms and prepare on your own time. We do like bagel bites. Um, we do have like local ice cream that we serve there. Um, it's a really great spot, um, and it, again, it's good for the late nights. Um, Rosetta's Kitchen is actually a locally owned and operated restaurant that's been a business in Asheville for over 18 years, and they're an all-vegetarian restaurant, um, although mostly, mostly vegan options. And I will tell you, no matter what kind of eater you are, Rosetta's is delicious, and we are so lucky to have them on campus. They're located in um, the Cheryl Center, which is by the Health and Wellness Building, and their food is amazing, everybody loves it, and as you can see from that picture, it's just a really bright, sunny place to hang out, study, take it easy, yeah, we, we just love Rosetta's, we're very, very happy to have them. And Argo Tea is, our, um, is, a, is actually a, a chain in Chicago that runs specialty teas, they have a lot of direct trade, fair trade um, uh, teas, and they do offer coffee and like the whole smorgasbord of coffee drinks. Um, I think people love them most for their muffins and scones. You walk in there, chocolate croissants are just like wafting through the library. And this is this is um, in the Ramsey Library lobby. So it's in the heart of campus. You almost can't avoid it when you're walking by. And it's just got a really cool vibe to it, some nice artwork. And like I said, lots of lots of really specialty tea drinks, bubble tea, and all that fun stuff. And lastly, we've roasted. And this is that other location in the Highsmith Student Union Building. And roasted is an awesome coffee kiosk where we actually serve locally um, owned and operated, or uh, locally roasted dynamite roasting company coffee. And we've got pastries by a local bakery. We've got um, a couple of drinks, as you can tell, the little cooler in the middle is not very large, but we've got a whole array of coffee drinks. Um, and that, this is open early in the morning and into the late, later evening too. So you can fuel up and get caffeinated before you write your papers or study for your tests. So we, like I said, we do lots of events. We try to keep it fun and spice it up. Um, we celebrate all kinds of holidays. We do lots of tables um, that just like decorate your own cupcakes or a hot cocoa bar. Um, I highly encourage any and all students and faculty staff to follow us on social media. That's usually where we let you know where we are, what we're doing. I love to give free things away, especially useful functional free things like bamboo reusable utensil sets and reusable straws. Um, so we, we keep yeah, we make it fun, so definitely stop by. It's a really, um, yeah, it's really fun. Um, sustainability, so I, as a sustainability coordinator, that's how I started here about two, about three years ago, and I could present a whole hour plus, and I do in classes, um, on our sustainability program and everything that we're doing to reduce our impact and make our, our place on this planet better. Um, I won't go into it now just for the sake of time, but um, you, UNC Asheville, we are leaders in sustainability in terms, especially in terms of dining, um, but really all across this campus. Um, it's a small campus with a loud voice and through student engagement and student passion, 
and faculty staff, we really have moved the needle more and more forward every year, every semester. We work on sourcing to waste reduction and all the things in between. Um, we do lots of like meet your farmer events. We're always looking to bring in more local products because Asheville is abundant with amazing local food and local goods. So um, yes, I hope you come to UNCA and I can teach you a whole lot more. Um, we also so our fair trade certified, we were the first fair trade campus designated in North Carolina. And Brown Hall is a three star green restaurant um, association restaurant. So that means we go through a lot of hoops and a lot of things to, make sure that we, to prove that we're doing what we're doing. So I can tell you more when you get here. So I'll go into the main thing, which are meal plans. That's, I think, especially as a resident student, um, everyone's got a lot of questions on meal plans, so I'm happy to cover this. And then again, more questions, bring them, bring them on, because we are happy to answer them. Um, so all residential students are required to purchase a meal plan. Now, if you're um, a first year students, I don't believe can live in the, the woods residence, but there are on campus apartments that aren't necessarily um, on the, with that requirement. Um, but it, yes, so um, with the red meal plans, they basically all cost the same and you, you purchase them through housing um, and you, you pick your plan as you go through with housing. Now with the plans, um, whatever you choose over the summer, you'll have until the third day of class. So usually classes start that Monday, I think it's August 17th. So you'll have until the 19th, that Wednesday, to, to change your mind if you decide you wanna change your plan. So that's always a good um, date and a little note to write in your calendar, just in case you wanna make a change. So with the difference between the plans, they all cost the same. And they're just basically, um, the top four plans, it's, it's more meals in the dining hall, which is the, you know, all you care to eat, basically a way to like maximize your calories, maybe if you're an athlete or you just need a lot of calories or you like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the, the 21 meal plan is going to get you the most meals in the dining hall, which, you know, technically it's the best bang for your buck. But if you like the flexibility of, let's say you want to go to Roasted and Argo, like I'm personally a a big uh, cappuccino drinker. So I know that I would want more flexibility. So the, the lesser meals in brown and the more declining balance will get you that flexibility to shop around campus and do maybe more snacks or more coffee drinks or that kind of thing. Um, and so the, if you look at the plans here, um, there's the number of meals, which are the top four plans are the meals in Brown Hall every week. And so the bottom plan, I won't really go into it, but that's actually a block plan. So those are 2,200 meals for the semester and $300 declining balance for the semester. Um, declining balance is like a debit card. So each of all of those numbers to the right are an amount of money that will get loaded onto your one card at the beginning of the semester and you'll have that money for the rest of the semester. So if you buy a bagel and a coffee and it's five bucks, you swipe your card, you just get deducted $5 from there. Um, so then with the meals, um, every week on Sunday, it's like 10 p.m., I'm not actually quite sure the exact time, um, your meals will reload. So during the week, as you go into Brown, you're swiping and then you're, you're using your meals. And then at the end of the week, if you have one left over, or two left over, those are actually gonna disappear and then you'll get the 14 meals added back to your plan or the 21 meals added to your plan, whichever plan you chose. So it's really just based on what kind of eater you are. Um, you know, are you a three meals a day kind of person? Or are you one of those people who likes to sleep in until you have to get up, you run to class, next thing you know, it's lunchtime and, and you're starting to, you're eating your first meal. That's how I am. When I was a student, I think I had like the 14 meal plan and the 10 um, the next semester. So it's really just kind of what eater you are. But again, once you get to campus, you'll have a few days to check everything out. You can go to the different outlets. You can you know, see what, what kind of items are on the menu. And then um, you can go from there and change that up until that last, the, the Wednesday after classes start. And then at the end of the semester, if you're um, 
if you don't change your plan, you're actually going to, it'll just roll over. Whatever plan you chose in the fall, it'll just roll over into the spring. Now, if you don't choose a plan and you just sign, you know, you get your housing, but you never choose a plan, the default plan is going to be the 21 meals and the $75 declining balance. And one more thing about this section, because it's a lot to explain, sounds complicated, but really once you kind of get, get here and get going, it's, it's a lot easier to understand. Um, the, if you read the little um, description underneath each of the meal plans, there's a thing called meal equivalencies. So each plan that we offer comes with a set number of meal equivalencies that you can use in, the retail, in our retail outlets. And each retail outlet, so Rosetta's, the Down Under, and High Smith Student Union, they have um, a select menu to choose from where, where you can use your meal equivalency. It's like a meal trade. Um, and actually, the Down Under, recently, we changed it so all of the, the entire menu in the, um, the deli kind of hot and cold sandwiches and non-pizzas are all good for that meal equivalency. So that's cool. Um, and so for the top four plans, each week you get either five meal equivalencies or three meal equivalencies, depending on the plan. Um, and every week you just get a whole new set. So each week you'll get five new ones, five new ones. They don't accrue, but they will reset. And then with the bottom plan, you know, the block plan, that's 20 meals you get um, for the entire semester. So 20 meal equivalencies to use at your leisure. So. That is the residential meal plans. Again, I'm happy to explain some more things. Um, and if you, I just have this on this, I wanted to put this on the screen, especially since it's being recorded so people can pause it and read it. Um, but it's just a little more information. And for any non-resident students, so let's say you're coming to UNCA, but you're gonna live off of campus already. Maybe you live in Asheville already. We do offer um, non-resident plans for any and all students that for their time here on campus and non-resident plans are great because you know once you're on campus it's nice to just stay on campus and this way you get um, a reduced price for your meals you know you kind of you kind of get to get the benefit of the block of the plan um, they also come with meal equivalencies and they are good for the entire um, academic year so non-resident plans come um, you get you start in the fall and then you have until spring the residential plans, you pick your plan for the fall and they're good for the fall. And then come the next semester, you get to change your plan if you'd like or stay with the same plan, but they're good per semester. All right, and so allergies and restrictions, we work with all kinds of students, all kinds of allergies. We have a dedicated registered dietitian on campus who meets with students individually. And so if you have any special need or, you know, dietary restriction or allergy or anything, please, please, please reach out to us. And the sooner the better, we'll get you on our list. We can get in contact and um, we're happy to go over any concerns you might have. And like I said, we work with all kinds of students and all kinds of diets. Um, and so we are more than happy to do everything we possibly can to make sure you have a safe and healthy and delicious experience here at UNCA. Um, so we are at the bottom if you need when you're here, which you'll be here and it's such a beautiful campus, especially this time of year. Um, we are at the second floor of Brown underneath the cafeteria. Um, if, and that's a good place if you need to change your meal plan or if you have questions when you're here, you can come get us. This is our crew. And so I miss everybody. And um, we do hire students all the time. So if you know that you're gonna be needing an on-campus job, um, we give you great perks like free food and also work with student schedules. Um, work if you, whether you have a two hour block or an eight hour block, we have all kinds of students work with us. Maybe you wanna learn how to be a barista and just have that skill in your back pocket. We will train you. So good food for thought. And like, um, this is our website, dineoncampus.com, um, a great place to stay in touch. And you can also purchase meal plans, find out hours, um, menus, um, the whole nine yards. And then, like I said, following us is great. I try to keep our, I actually run our social media, try to do all kinds of fun things um, and let students know where the free food and the free, the fun can be. And I think that's it. I should have had another. 
Great. So that's it. So, <laughs> um, Cam, did you want to share from student perspective and anything you want to add to anything that I just mentioned? Um, yeah, I let me look. I, I saw two questions in the chat, so I maybe I'll start there. Um, oh, someone just asked how many weeks are in a semester. It's like three and a half months. Um, yeah, I think it's about 16 weeks normally. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, all right. And then I guess um, before I answer that other question that was in the chat, um, I will say that dining is very accommodating to students. Um, my first like or big impression I guess I get from dining is uh, the variety they have. Uh, so our main dining hall, Brown Hall, in itself, there's like so many options, different stations, uh, depending on your eating style. Uh, but aside from that, there are like four or five other uh, meal options on campus. Uh, so there is a lot of variety, as I said. Um, Rosetta was actually voted by students to get on campus. The university asked students what they'd want, um, and students voted for that. Um, so they really do listen to student feedback. Um, we got a whole, you know, option on campus uh, because we they ask us what we wanted, um, and in addition to that, um, they also leave like comic card boxes, uh, all of the dining options and things like that. So you can always leave feedback as a student, and they're always taking that into account, and they'll change things um, to meet as many needs as possible, really. Uh, so yeah. Perfect. Well, again, thank you all so much, uh, you guys, for, for all this amazing information. Um, and now we like to try to provide an opportunity for some follow-up questions, some things that you might want to know more about dining services. Like I said, we have an amazing expert and student who this is what they do. This is their, their, their life, their, their areas of expertise. So we want to try to take advantage of it while you're here. And um, I'll go ahead and kick this off, kind of looking at the, the question and answer. If you could, would you mind going a little bit more in depth about meal equivalencies and things like that across campus students that can use their meal plan to to uh, be a meal equivalent for a different option. Sure. So um, in Rosetta's and in the Heisman Student Union we have um, each category of food so we we have the grill we also have the taco there's actually like a make your own taco burrito Mexican kind of style food and then the build your own pizza. And each of those sections has um, the uh, several options that work for a meal trade. Um, so the thing about the meal equivalencies is, you know, Brown Hall is like a Sam's Club where we buy everything in bulk. <laughs> and it's a huge volume, like we feed over a thousand people every day just from that dining hall. But, you know, in our smaller retail outlets, they're really more like restaurants. So, so we can't quite have the menu equal the same because the volume that we buy things at Highsmith or even Rosetta's is very different. But we try to offer as many things as possible. We'll also do like limited time only offerings. So kind of like a monthly special or a three week special just to kind of mix it up. And then we, we've also started doing something recently where we offer some of our higher end stuff like we offer a blended burger, which at the Highsmith Student Union, that is local and, or, and humanely raised beef blended with local mushrooms. So it's just like a really nice, more sustainable way to eat meat. Um, and students love it, people love it, but we actually started, it's a it's more expensive product. We actually make it by hand. So we can't necessarily offer it in that meal trade all the time, but now we offer it every Wednesday. You can get your meal, your burger, your side, and a drink for a meal swipe plus $3 in DB. So we're trying to kind of mix it up where you might end up needing to pay a little bit more in declining balance, but then you get this really specialty, like nicer, like higher end thing. Um, and the meal equivalencies will get you the drink and at least a side, like an entree portion of food. So it's, it's, it's obviously not all you care to eat like Brown Hall, but it does give you like a good hearty meal. Um, depending on the location. Perfect. So let's see, the next question would be, is there a way to check your declining balance like an app or on one port? Um, or do we have to keep up with it, the balance for themselves? 
Yes, so um, our, our cashiers, any, anywhere you are, the cashier can tell you as soon as you swipe your card how much declining balance you have, how many meal equivalencies you have, and how many meals you have in Brown. Um, but then, yes, you can check it. I don't actually know the website off the top of my, he my head, but housing has that website link, I'm pretty sure. Um, but you can check it online as well. Also, every time you buy something with declining balance, your receipt will say at the bottom, the total remaining that you have. So you'll know every time you buy something how much you have. Nice. I know typically there are seasonal times like finals and midterms where the hours are maybe extended in certain locations, but what would be your typical like Brown Hall dining hours um, that it's open for, say breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Sure. So during the week, we are probably busier, more people are on campus um, eating. So we're open, I believe it's 7.30 in the morning to 8.30 at night. And then on the weekends, we do close, I believe it's 7.30 on Friday and Saturday night. But then come Sunday, we are closed until 8.30. Um, and now the dining hall does close for um, short periods of time. Between breakfast and um, lunch during the week, there's a 30 minute window just for our chefs to swap out breakfast foods for lunch foods. So from 10.30 to 11, we're, we're, we're closed and for hot food. Um, and then between two and four o'clock, no, two and 4.30, and during the week we are closed, but um, so our chefs can prepare lunch, or excuse me, dinner foods and clean up everything for lunch. Um, but with that said, we're still open whenever you walk in the door, our relax, Station, which is like our cereals. Um, we've got coffee, a sh bunch of different schmears and toast and bagels and all those things. Like kind of like your home pantry would, would have. That station is always open. And also between lunch and dinner, deli is open. We have a huge salad bar with several different options and that stays open too. So even if you come in, you know, at 2.30 or 3.30 and you're hungry, you can definitely find Find some food even if the hotline's not open. Cameron, you're on mute. There we go. <laughs> um, you had mentioned this a little bit during the presentation, but just to, to confirm and reiterate, there are um, utensils like like maybe toasters or, or different places across like Brown Hall that are dedicated solely for vegan, vegetarian, gluten free options and, and, and things along the, 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 the main dining all brown experience yes so we have for our allergen station we have a a, a whole station where we have um, gluten-free waffle batter and an iron that is dedicated to gluten-free waffles now and we have cereals that are there that are guaranteed to be avoiding gluten we do call it avoiding gluten because our cafeteria we don't at this moment we don't have a dedicated kitchen to officially call something gluten-free um, but when it says avoiding gluten, that means the utmost precaution has been taken to make sure that there's no cross-contamination as best we can other than particles in the air. Um, now, with the toaster oven, we actually recently, um, we moved the toaster oven off of the counter, and it's actually underneath the salad bar, like under the counter, basically. Um, and that's just to protect students. We were finding that Every so often there might be someone who wasn't necessarily paying attention and they put regular gluten bread into that toaster oven and that's not okay for someone who's, who's celiac or has an intolerance or sensitivity. So we actually moved that toaster oven um, away from just the open air and when a student needs it, they just ask for it from any of our staff. They'll, they actually put the whole toaster oven on a tray and it's just sitting, it's already plugged in the student uses it and then the staff puts it back away. And we, we're just finding that steps like that are just one another way we can ensure that everyone's eating um, safe in our, in our dining hall. Um, and then, like I said, the G8 station is great. Um, it, it's got purple handles, purple tools. We actually have, under, by our Create Pasta station, we have a whole kit that is special for if you need avoiding gluten um, noodles for your pasta sauce. We and like and you have a sensitivity where you can't handle the cross contamination. We have special tools dedicated for your food to be brought out special for you. And so just really try to look out for everybody. So um, you had mentioned that you can use declining balance at like the high student union.
but does that also include places like Rosetta's across our campus? Yes, yes, you can use de declining balance all across campus, um, whether it's buying your Argo tea, if you're buying Rosetta's, they'll take, they, they also sell some snack foods and um, they have actually a whole coffee section too. So if you wanna grab a drink from there, your declining balance is good all across campus. And actually declining balance is also good at Pizza Hut, which <laughs> is awesome. I think it's a late night special. Um, I will tell you though, from experience, you gotta be careful using your declining balance because uh, a couple, couple of large cheese pizzas can <laughs> cost a lot. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the thing about declining balance is, um, and with all of the plan choices, um, you know, you really just need to, it's, it's about budgeting your money. Um, and it's a good lesson to learn if you haven't already learned it. I think plenty of people in the working world still need to, are still working on the budget, you know, practice. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, how much, how much flexibility do you want on campus? And then how well are you, are you going to be able to budget? your money um, and you know really just paying attention to how much you're spending and maybe you don't get that you know caramel latte five times a week maybe you get it twice a week or something like that so um, yeah perfect and um, the meal plan uh, a lot of students wonder where that's located and, and, and most of the time the meal plan and again correct me if I'm wrong is located on their their, their student ID card that's kind of your your pass for pretty much everything across the, the UNCA campus. Yes, your one card is your your golden ticket to all kinds of things. And so yes, everything is loaded, your declining balance and your, your meal swipes are all on your one card. Um, it's also, it's a good idea to start just memorize your student ID number because if you forgot your one card or you can't seem to find it at the moment, um, you can walk up and just um, tell us your number and we'll type it in. So that is also a good backup plan. But if you haven't memorized it, then you're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> Does Brown Hall, like, like you had mentioned, it's, it's very, you know, kind of buffet style, sit down, grab as much as you want, but are there any grab and go options that, that may be at Brown for students who only have, let's say they grab a quick bowl of cereal and then wanna grab something as they um, jet off to class? Yep, so we actually use um, a, a green eco clamshell, um, which is one really cool way we're reducing our impact. Um, now, mind you, with that said, this semester that we're going to embark on might look a little different than our normal operations, and hopefully all of this will pass like water under the bridge. Um, but normal years, we have a green eco clamshell where if you know you're gonna need some food to go, you can go ahead and swipe your card and just walk in, fill that box up and just walk right on out the door. Um, and what a, a lot of students will actually do is they'll, they'll actually come in and eat for lunch and go ahead and grab their dinner for later. And with that, all you need to do is you can do two swipes. And so you can eat your food there and you can also just go ahead and fill that box up and take it to go. Now that we sell the eco clamshells, they are $7 um, whenever you wanna buy it. But then if you keep your receipt, well actually um, at the end of the school year or end of the semester, you can return it for a $5 refund. So really it only costs $2. And that's actually, we don't offer disposable to-go containers um, to take away normally. I, the, we might look a little different this coming semester. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? We're all kind of in that boat. <laughs> what, what day is it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, uh, also with grab and go snacks from Brown, uh, there's not like actual like grab and go sandwiches, but a lot of the times like I'll swipe in, like make a bagel and then just like take that bagel to class with me. Um, and then if you were like specifically looking for like a grab and go sandwich, uh, like almost all of our other dining options have grab and go um, options uh, that you can choose from. I love the ice cream a lot. I tend to grab a cone and take that with me back downstairs to my office. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. About, about one in every three people walk out with a ice cream cone and a banana. <laughs> and That's we fully support that. Yes. It'll still be a little cold and a little, maybe a little snow coming down. They're still walking out with ice cream. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Um, well, a few things we did implement this past semester was um, offering a tortilla shell at the salad bar. And so you can actually make your own wrap 
Um, and our salad bar is stocked with like pickled vegetables, raw vegetables, cooked beans, hummus, like little grilled chicken pieces. I mean, salad dressings. And so a lot of people were getting into making their own wraps, which could be a nice grab and go kind of option if you are in a hurry. And then our deli, um, right between deli and bakery, we usually keep um, pre-made sandwiches. So every morning we'll make a different wrap. And so that, those are always ready too, if maybe you don't have time to wait in line, if, if Delhi has a line to it. And I know for, for our end and, and a lot of the UNC University, um, that first week or two of, of class, there's always like activities fairs and different departments are reaching out to students who may are maybe looking for, you know, job like uh, Nate who runs our amazing ambassador program who Camden is, 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 is a part of um, hires local students. And so um, when students maybe are interested in working on campus as a cashier or a barista, what would be the best way that they could get in touch with y'all or, or how would you go about that process? It's a great question. So um, when the school, when semester starts, we will, we'll be part of the job fair. We're usually part of the internship fair as well. Um, and we honestly, we have cards in front of um, all of our cashier stands with a link to go ahead and just apply online um, because because we are a big food service company, you do need to kind of apply online and start the steps. They sometimes can take a couple of days. Um, but then once you get going, um, it's pretty easy. And really, you students especially have a say. And I mean, obviously, if you know we have a need for a barista, we're going to be looking for a barista. But you can kind of let us know what you're interested in. And the best part is you let us know what your schedule is and you know what what can you handle compared to school's priority. And we know that you know we we love working with students, but their main reason why they're here is to is to do well and excel um, at school. So we're really happy to work with people um, to whatever they need need to do. Perfect. Um, you had mentioned that a lot of the ingredients that we use and a lot of the products we use, we try to keep as local to Asheville as possible. And so someone in our chat wants to know, is our milk local? And I will take that a step further and say, what ingredients do you know of or things that you know that we, we tend to buy a lot of that are from either Asheville or like local Western North Carolina markets? Yeah. Okay. Great question. Um, so our, our milk is actually technically within 250 miles. Um, our, we get all of our milk from Pet Dairy, um, so technically an, their, their farms are all located in South Carolina, which is within 250 miles. We don't really call them local because when I think of local, I kind of think smaller to medium-sized business, not necessarily a large conglomerate like that. I would love to get some local milk and like that good cream on top kind of stuff, um, but baby steps, you know, everything. I would say... Um, we use a lot of like our smiling her tempeh. It, our tempeh is all local. Um, we use no um, like a seitan. They like this particular company likes to call it plant meat, um, but that's all local all the time. And I would say like our produce is probably the best. Um, you know, especially in the fall, it's just we work with a local produce company, so they. Um, they, they know what we want, they know what the students want, so they work really hard to send us the local cases as much as possible. And if it's not local, we really, we actually focus on regional as well, because we'd rather our produce be coming from Georgia than California or Mexico. Um, and so we actually have a really great connection with that. Um, and then I would say we, we do source some of our, our meat is um, Hickory Nut Gap, um, which is a local, company it's a local farm but they're a, 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 a cooperation of farmers across the southeast that are really trying to make a difference and grow their animals on pasture pasture raised no antibiotics like really strict welfare practices and i love them and i love supporting them um and then something we just introduced before all this crazy stuff went down um we actually switched all of our beef in the dining hall to come from the chop shop which is a local butcher right down the street. And they use apple brandy beef, which is a farm really close to us that has a really cool story. And I'm really excited to tell their story when we get back to business. Uh, so I would say those, and then some other local things we use in our retail um, are 
our the hop ice cream we have. We've got these Dolce de Maria. They're like vegan and gluten free desserts, but oh my goodness, they are so good. Everyone loves them. Everyone loves them. Um, and lots of drinks. We use like local kombucha and um, coffee. We do a lot of coffee on campus. <laughs> um, so we do focus a lot on local, but we also are trying to focus on organic, fair trade, you know, products that we can be sure that they come from a really good source. Um, and so we're always just looking um, to make those steps and make those changes. We're actually working with um, two students right now on a procurement project where they're, they're assessing our data for the last um, year, two different months. And we're, once we finalize that data, we're going to try and figure out how many more shifts we could make. Like, okay, if we purchase 200 cases of X, what if we, pur you know, we could purchase 100 cases in the future of a, a, you know, a local or higher welfare, more sustainable product? And, you know, how, how can we just make that happen? So, yeah, we're always, we're always looking for more, more, more things. We kind of keep rolling with the, the milk question. Um, does Brown offer any non-dairy milk options, like maybe like oat or lactose-free or anything like that? Camden, you want to answer this one? <laughs> uh, sure, yeah. Uh, Brown has almond milk uh, and soy and coconut milk. So, oh, not coconut milk, just no. almond and soy. There you go. Coconut tree allergy, we got to be a little more careful with that one. I mean, almonds too, I guess, but yes, almond and soy, both chocolate and regular. And then we do oat milk in um, on, across campus, like Argo Tea has oat milk. And all of our coffee shops have multiple um, milk choices. Um, yes, so we do that. And then we also offer like Smart Balance, which is... Um, you know, it's an, a, a butter alternative that is got a little like just really good spread and we, we offer that too instead of cow's butter. You had mentioned earlier that some uh, like, for example, like Pizza Hut, you can use your declining balance at with certain specialties and certain times throughout the day. Are there any other locations in Asheville that you may know of that take the, the, the meal swipes for the declining balance? I know a lot of locations are really big about supporting our UNCA students mm -hmm. we'll offer discounts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, always, always ask for a student discount. Yep. You'll get it most of the time. So I mean, I've walked in with my with my uh, name tag on, uh, taking my wife out to dinner after work one day, and they were like, "Oh, you work for UNCA?" Like they gave me the student discount. So nice. A student discount is a thing, and especially they give your your one card on you. But I didn't know if any may offer the declining balance or meal swipes. Yes, so I know, I'm pretty sure you get a free bus ride, right? In the city of Asheville, you get a free bus with your one card. Um, I know that like the Hop, which is actually, they have a shop right down the street. The Hop, Urban Burrito, and Brugger's Bagel all offer a student discount with your one card. And that's all walking distance from, I mean, I like walking, so it's, it's not that far. It's like through the neighborhood. Um, so they offer discounts, and I bet you Green Sage is a restaurant. I'm sure I would be shocked if they didn't also offer something. Um, but in terms of using your declining balance, I don't know of any other um, partner that the school has in terms of accepting declining balance. Um, I will say something that's really exciting is we actually have a farmer's market on campus. It's run by the North Asheville tailgate market and it's hosted by UNC Asheville, but it is the best market we have in Asheville, and we have a lot of farmer's markets. Believe me, I go to all of them because I love farmer's markets. So yeah, it's the best one we have. There's live music, there's dogs, there's babies, like everybody's happy and flowers, and it's just even fun to walk around, um, but a lot of farms give free samples, which is fun, um, but it's literally on campus. So we, I see UNCA students there all the time, and usually in the fall, we run, um, we actually do a scavenger hunt uh, through dining services and the winner gets to, um, gets like a $50 gift card to the farmer's market. So I hope we get to do that again this year. Um, but it's a great resource on campus. And yeah, it's, it's fantastic. They run um, from April to usually the last weekend of November. And depending on the weather, they'll like, they'll switch to a holiday market through December. So. 
I know that's that's one opportunity that students can get outside and, and enjoy campus and, 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 and you know local dining options. But do, do does your office ever do anything like maybe an outdoor barbecue when there's special events on campus or anything like that? Yes. So we um, when when students first come onto campus, again, I'm just going to go based on normal years because yeah. This is, yeah, it's just a <laughs> different time. Uh, so, back to normal times. Yes, I think everyone can relate to that. It's good, it's good. So we actually, um, the school hosts uh, a, a whole barbecue on the quad that's open to every student. So you don't have to, you know, be a residential student to partake. Um, and it's the beginning of the semester or beginning of the school year in August. And um, we actually put that on, it's on the quad huge tents, there's all kinds of activities and clubs that are being represented and it's just this really fun, really like tangible, exciting event that the school puts on. And then um, we partner with all kinds of departments. So like student rec center, they might want a barbecue, you know, out in the Mills Plaza or whatever, you know, Greenfest might want to do an event outside. And so we partner, we actually run all the catering on campus as well. So um, like school clubs, they actually have funding, you know, dedicated to host events for students. And so whatever they want, we make sure we can, you know, we make it happen. Um, so yes, there's definitely some barbecues and um, trying to think. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, it's always funny to hear Nate and I talk because I'm from coastal North Carolina. So I grew up on the vinegar barbecue and then he's re relocated down here. So he likes the Western North Carolina barbecue. So we have that that debate all the time. But um, one question that we tend to get a lot in the admissions office, and I know typically for our um, incoming freshmen, first time college bound students, they get to purchase their meal plan or they select their meal plan as part of their housing application. But maybe for some of our transfers or some of our um, uh, non-traditional students, um, how much is the meal plan gonna cost in the 2020, 2021 <laughs> academic year and when do those become available for students to purchase? So those should actually start to be available. Um, pretty sure I was I already have that posted on our website by now, but I'm not sure um, if when those um, will actually be posted. But I'm pulling up the prices. Um, so the non-resident plans. You get your choice of like a 20 block plan, 40, 75, 100, or 150. And obviously as the price goes up, the price per meal goes down. Um, and so it's kind of like a bulk buying thing. And again, the non-residential plans are good for the entire academic year. So if you buy them in the fall, it's really the best time to maximize your, your money and get the most out of your meal plan. Um, and so the, just for example, the 20 block plan is going to be $180 to start. And I didn't do the math already, but like, uh, it's usually about 750 or like, it's a, it's like eight, 880. Don't quote me, but, um, it is under $9 usually for like the 20 meal plan. And then for the 150, it might be around like 750 or something. So again, it just incrementally goes down. Um, I don't actually have off the top of my head what our door rate is, mm -hmm. but um, you know, students and faculty staff, you are welcome to walk in to the dining hall on any given day and just pay up at the door. So we do offer that too. You don't have to have a meal plan to come eat with us. Um, a meal plan is just going to save you some money in the long run. If someone... And, yeah. Oh, that it should it it should be able to be um um for sale this summer for sure. It'll all be open in the summer. Um, so if someone who let's say like a transfer for example who wants to eat on campus, roughly seventy or eighty percent of their time, and then maybe at other or in Brown Hall 80, 70, 70, 70 or eighty percent of their time, and then maybe some of the other options across campus. Is there a particular meal plan that you recommend for for them or? Is it just kind of, again, based on the number of, of meals that you think they would normally have in Brown Hall? And your question is based on a residential plan? Let's, let's just say a, a non-residential, let's say like a transfer, like someone who- Okay, so the transfer students or you know, the non-resident students, the plan, um, each plan are all meals in Brown and they just come with a number of retail options. 
So um, it's actually just, if you're gonna eat and brown 70% of the time, if you wanna look at the, you know, um, how many weeks are in the semester slash academic year, and then kind of base that, you could probably roughly estimate how many meals you would want to have on your meal plan. And you know, it's always wise to just, you know, budget and use your, you know, use your meals wisely um, because, you know, they don't roll over from the academic year. So from spring into fall, those plans don't roll over. So you want to make sure you're just using all of your meals. You know, it's really good to do that. So, if, um, yeah. If you were a residential student, would you say like 21 for that question? Like 80% Brown Hall, 10%? Like, I feel like that's a pretty good chunk of time yeah. out of it. So one of the higher ones is what I, what I would think, I don't know. Sure, yeah, I think the, um, so you you have the 21 meal option and then the next one is 14. And when you kind of think of it, it's like 21 meals is three meals a day, seven days a week. And then 14 meals are two meals a day, seven days a week. And so, you know, if, like, I think a lot of students, you kind of know already, like, like, are you a breakfast, big breakfast eater or are you not, you know, like, do you want to start your day out with like a lot of protein and get your coffee and maybe your smoothie and all that jazz? Um, that 21 meals is going to really, you're going to be able to maximize the number of times you visit. Um, it feels almost like an unlimited plan when you have that 21 meals. Um, so that's nice. But like for me, when I was a student here, I just, I mean, I would sleep until I had to get up. I would run to biology, you know, <laughs> I did not be late. And then I would, you know, I would maybe do this or that. And I would like have my coffee with me or something, or I would buy coffee at the library. And then come lunchtime, I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. I should go to Brown. And then I will say, it's not like you care to eat facilities. So it's pretty easy to enjoy lots of food. And, you know, maybe you're like really full. Like I would pretty much fill up. And then, you know, at the at, for dinner, I would maybe do a lighter dinner or I would go back to brown. So for me, like the, the 10 meals was great or like even the seven. Um, but I love like my coffee drinks. I'm just like a little barista. You know, I should have just been a barista at some point or something. So it's just really based on the kind of eater you are. But that's what I love is when you get to campus, you're going to have a few days to check things out you know, get the lay of the land, you know, see, see what kinds of foods are being offered at different locations. And then you'll have a couple of days to decide if you're going to switch to a different meal plan. Like maybe you are like, there's so much food at Brown. I would rather just do the 21 meals and just maximize my calories that way or vice versa. Um, but then also, you know, if it comes October and you've decided, man, I'm, you know, I'm just, this meal plan is really not working for me you're going to be able to change it like between winter, between, um, the, between semesters in, in December, go into your housing portal and just choose a different meal plan. And you'll definitely know what kind of eater you are at UNCA at that point. So you're not locked into it for like a huge length of time. So that's good. We have a couple of questions that are roughly about the same. So I'm gonna try to pull them together. Um, and Camden again, feel as a current student, I'm sure you've had friends or have visitors that come to campus to see you. Can you use your meal swipes or is there a guest visitor pass? Like if, you know, if, if Camden, if your friend from Wilmington <laughs> came to, came to see you, uh, how could you get them into the, the dining hall? Yeah. So um, please correct me if I'm wrong, Megan. Uh, I do not believe you can use any meal swipes uh, on any guests. However, whatever the charges to get into Brown, uh, like if an outsider came, I think it's like, nine or so dollars you would use your declining balance of that much to get somebody else in yep pretty much yeah the meals are non-transferable you know it's kind of like your package your your membership if you will uh, so the meals aren't transferable but you're welcome to use declining balance for sure and um so uh, again the balance carry over from spring to next fall no, so no plans carry over from spring until fall because that's a new academic year. Um, now for residential students, your plan is good for the semester. Everything's for the semester. So again, that's why you're able to choose your, a new plan for the next semester if you want to. Um, so everything you choose in terms of that will get, um, 
yeah, it's, it's all, it's all just, you know, all your declining balance you have for that semester, all of your meals you'll have for that semester. And then you'll get a new choice or, you know, keep the same, same plan if you want the next semester. Um, but residential or the non-resident plans, so the, the commuter students, if you will, um, they, or, you know, the woods residents, if you want, um, you, that's good for the academic year. So fall to spring. Perfect, perfect. Um, so one of the questions we have um, is about can financial aid pay for your meal plan? And ultimately it, it, it can. So the way that we work, um, we have the total cost of attendance, which if you're a freshman student will include your room, board fees, meal plan, tuition. If you're a transfer student, it'll include tuition and fees. And then if you have a meal plan, I'll add it on there. And then your financial aid will be applied against that cost. Um, so if you have financial aid to cover the cost of that, it can. Um, it just depends on how much your financial aid award information um, the amount is versus the total cost of your attendance plus your meal plan, whatever that may be. So um, it can, it just, it just depends. Um, is there vegan ice cream on campus? I know, we, like I said, we, we, at UNCA, we strive really, really hard to provide vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free. Like, you know, I, I moved, uh, when, I, when I took this job, I was a true kind of meat and taters, southern kind of kid. And I actually went vegetarian for eight months. And it was one of the oddly easiest or easier things than I, that I ever thought I would do just because there are ample um, options across campus. Like I went into the, to the, the pizza place and had an entirely, I had vegan cheese and vegan dough. And it was you know, something I'd never even considered. And so the, the amount of options, and I'm assuming would include the vegan ice cream um, across our campus. Yep, yep. So in two locations, we sell the hop ice cream and they, um, they have a uh, delicious array of cow and no cow. And what I love, I, I am a big ice cream eater myself, but what, I actually choose the vegan ice creams at the hop because they're just so good. Like they make ice cream out of sunflower milk and hemp milk and just banana. They have like this whole line of banana ice creams that somehow, I mean, it's creamy and delicious and wonderful. And so we sell pints of their ice cream in both locations. And the dining hall, we, we make a point to always have a vegan dessert and an avoiding gluten dessert as well. And we have two amazing bakers. I miss them so much. Right? <laughs> they're amazing and they do all kinds of fun things. Um, they just, they're really good at what they do and they love, they love working with students and um, the bakery is where it's at for sure. Um, so they have lots of good vegan options there. And it looks like we are down to our last question. And so again, thank you everyone for, for joining us. Thank you guys um, for, for, for joining me here. Um, but the last question we have today before we wrap up is, so in regards to the declining balance at the end of the semester, is it a use it or lose it? How does that work? What happens to it? Yep, so it is a use it or lose it kind of scenario. Um, you want to, um, yeah, pay attention to how much you have and use it to the best of your ability. Um, we typically sell out of a lot of our uh, bulk items towards the end of the semester. So if someone happens to have stuff left over, you know, you're welcome to buy like a couple cases of soda, boxes of granola, you know, like a bunch of chips, whatever, whatever you want. Um, you know, I know that was never an issue when I was a student because I was pretty good at spending money. Yep. Um, but yeah, if you happen to have money left over, you would definitely just use it um, to buy stuff. And what's cool too is from the fall to the spring, you know, you're coming back to campus. So you could stock up your dorm and then, you know, go home for a couple weeks and come back and you've got all these goods. So. Yeah, one of my friends like overly budgeted and like, you know, became everyone's Santa at the end of the semester, just like, <laughs> like buying stuff for everyone. Nice. It's, always, it's always fun to see the students come out of the student union with, you know, like you say, cases of soda or yeah. under their arms, exactly. <laughs> you yeah. Know, yeah, I mean, we now sell those yerba mate cans that everyone's obsessed with. We also have like six brand ambassadors on campus. So everyone's got a yerba mate in their hands at all times. But, you know, you could get like, we, we sold cases of those last semester um, just because some people had, had money left over, so. Yeah, there's definitely creative ways you can you can use your money wisely. Perfect. Well, again, um, thank everyone so much for joining us, all the participants. Uh, amazing questions. Those, those were, were, were great questions. It was, it was amazing to, to have Megan and Camden here to, to speak about the dining services we have here on campus, 
Again, feel free to check the Dining Services website for future updates, their social media accounts, the admission social media accounts. And just in case y'all aren't sick of me already, um, I will be hosting the Thursday um, Q&A with UNCA. So that'll be round four. And that will be with our um, housing on campus. So we'll get to answer, um, get all of your questions and inquiries about residential life and living on campus taken care of um, from some of their experts as well. So again, thank y'all so much for joining us today. Megan Camden, thank y'all so much for uh, joining us in the admissions office today. And um, please y'all, if you have any questions that come up later, sh shoot us an email, phone call. We're all here to help. Yeah, thanks for being here, everyone. We look thank forward to everybody. seeing you next semester. <laughs> mm <laughs>